My Lord Sir Richard, Duke of Gloucester, Master Henry Percival, 3rd Earl of Leicester, and Sir William de Courcy, Grand Duke of all of Kent. Gentlemen, you have traveled far today, and your eyes speak of many, many happenings. Tell me now, in the name of the king, what news of Essex? Uh, 125 all out, Gooch, without first ball. <laughs> Just the three of us doing a show and getting it right on the night. I'm Robin and I'm handsome. And I'm Boris and I'm tall. I'm grey, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm short and I'm fat and I'm bald as a billiard ball. Where the grumble is. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. Eight potatoes. Hurry up, will you, pal? I'm not waiting all night for a bag of chips. <laughs> There's the three of us going on stage, hoping the studio's packed. See the three of us acting our age, except when he's aging our acts. That's nice. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Well, I'll be up with the queue out here waiting to use it. <laughs> My hair's red as copper. My hair's grey as sinker. My hair has all fallen out ages ago, but my head's a lovely pink. Where the rumbleweeds? Hello, British Rail, can I help you? I'd just like to say how nice it was travelling on one of your trains yesterday. It came dead on time and got me there exactly when they said it would. All the porters and guards were very nice to me, very helpful indeed, and the food on the train, well, it was lovely, absolutely lovely. So anyway, I just thought I'd let you know how much I enjoyed it, and well, that's all. Hang on a minute, pal. Here, Harry. I'll keep him talking, you get the police. I've got one of them obscene phone calls. <laughs> Party along, playing for laughs till the end. Just the three of us doing the voices in the wrong place now and then. Hello. Is that Northwest Walter? Yes. I've got a message for you. <laughs> Good things come in threes. I learned that as a lad. I'm Robin. I'm Morris. He's Graham. Well, two out of three is not bad. Trio, everyone needs half an hour with someone and the grumble weeds. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and jelly spoons. And another hospitable welcome from my Uncle Rubbish to our humble little show. Well said, old gaffer. Here we go. Another half hour of prattling on about nothing. <laughs> Every week I have to listen to your stupid wittering, your pathetic prattle. And after two minutes of that, those two insane specimens come on and say... Hello, everybody. It's us, isn't it, Geoffrey? It is Ernest. It's us. Yes. yes. What did I tell you? Garbage. We've got some interesting news for you this week, haven't we, Geoffrey? Yes, we have, Ernest. Interesting is the word. It is, Geoffrey. What is the word that's interesting? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's your interesting news? Geoffrey and me have joined a formation dancing team. <laughs> we have, yes. The Abigail Potter formation dance team. <laughs> Mrs Rubbish used to belong to a formation dance team. Stroll on. She came home one day and said, I'm an Annie Clegg fairy footer. <laughs> Brilliant! What a name, Ernest. The Annie Clegg fairy footers. I wish we were fairy footers. <laughs> oh, so do I, Geoffrey. I'd give anything to be a fairy footer. I wonder how long it would take me to walk to Australia. <laughs> They were all members of the women's knitting circle and one day they got fed up of knitting so they started a formation dancing team. Oh, were they any good? They were fabulous. How many couples were there? Two. <laughs> two couples? Yeah. What sort of formations could you do with two couples? Well, they used to do a straight line and then go around in circles. <laughs> 
new partner to your missus, old lad. Annie Clegg. <laughs> you mean they were all women? Yes. You don't get many men in a women's knitting circle, do you? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Weren't you a fairy footer then, old lad? No, I used to put the records on. Mrs. Rubbish used to make her own dresses. <laughs> I used to help her sew on all her sequins. Wonderful. She once made a dress out of 406 yards of green tulle. 406 yards? Yeah, well, it went round her twice. <laughs> and she trimmed it with that uh, crepe, um, you know, crepe... Uh... Shows that? No. <laughs> Crepe... Uh, bandage. That's it, yeah. <laughs> it had 12 yards of crepe bandage on it. Purple lapels. A red belt with cherries on. <laughs> she looked lovely. Oh, what kind of dances did they do? Well, they were a bit restricted there. We only had the one record. <laughs> the Oki Koki. I've heard it all now. What a brilliant idea, Jeffrey. A formation okey cokey. That's brilliant. Like, can you imagine? I can. There'll be things shaking about all over the place. Crying <laughs> out loud, pack it in. What was on the other side of that record, old lad? The Pasadobo. <laughs> That's where one person is the matador and the other person's the cow. <laughs> When's the next eclipse? <laughs> Annie Clegg was the cow, and Mrs. Rubbish had to lure her in this dance, the Pasadobo, yeah. Ah, was she any good at luring then, your missus? Brilliant. She used to practice on me at home. <laughs> she used to lure me out of the bathroom, across the landing and into the spare bedroom. <laughs> and then she'd tantalise me. And how did it end up? Well, I usually ended up under the tall boy. <laughs> I'd have my way, you'd end up under a bus. Listen, did you ever do any jitterbugging? No, but my Uncle Herbert was a 1948 jitterbug endurance champion. He was then. He was, hey. He once jitterbugged non-stop for four days. Jitterbugged for four days? He must have been tired. Tired, he would jittered. <laughs> hey! This is quite astonishing. What are you on about? This book I got from the library. What's it called? A Dictionary of Film Stars. Do you know, it tells you all you want to know about famous film stars who are well known. What's so astonishing about it, Ralph Face? Snow White. <laughs> Snow White? She's 94. <laughs> that is astonishing. Garbage. What does it say about Mickey Rooney? Let's have a look. Good heavens, it's 206. <laughs> Who would have thought Mickey Rooney were 206? Lassie. Lassie? 97. Never. We used to love Lassie, didn't we, Ernest? Oh, we did, Geoffrey. Oh, here we go again. Lassie, come on. Oh, yes. She got lost in that one, didn't she? Oh, she did, yeah. We cried buckets, didn't we? We did. Buckets, we cried. Yes. What was it we cried? Buckets. Buckets. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that scene when she was lost? Oh, what a touching scene that was. Oh. She went, woof, woof. Woof. Woof, woof, woof. Woof. I've heard some garbage in my time, but, you know, this. Woof, woof, woof. Woof, woof, woof. Bark. I remember that scene. It was really sad, that. But the bit that upset me was when she went, wine, 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 wine. <laughs> Owl bark, woof, woof, wine. I don't believe this. My favourite bit was when she went, yelp. <laughs> then she paused. Yelp, yelp, yelp. Woof, wine, woof. Yelp. <laughs> Heel! The lot of you. Stroll on. Hey, look at this. He were my favourite. Oh, lad. Nazrat. <laughs> Nazrat. You're holding the book upside down, you wally. It's Tarzan. <laughs> hey, see if you can guess who this is from what it says in this book. He is sophisticated, suave and full of public school breeding. 
the epitome of the English gentleman. Bernard Manning. Wrong. <laughs> Who is it, then? Well, if you answer the door, you'll find out. There's nobody at the door. You won't be told, will you? <laughs> I don't believe it. It's that typical English gentleman and one of my favourites from the telly. I say, would you get my bags out of the rolls? You rang me, lad? It's Donald Hewlett! <laughs> What an absolute pleasure to be here. Absolutely first class. I say, what an absolutely splendid place you've got here. This is the first time I've ever seen a porter cabin from the inside. <laughs> absolutely first rate. I do so like the way my feet sort of sink into the sawdust. <laughs> do you fellows play polo? I don't suppose you do in this cold weather, keep dropping the horse. <clears throat> Although I must admit that I'm a croquet man myself. I enjoy croquet, especially the crispy ones. <laughs> Where can I put my coat? Try stuffing it in your mouth. <laughs> ah, I take it you're my new staff. Uh, let's have a look at you. Well, I suppose you only get what you pay for. Now, I've had rather a long journey, and I'd relish a cup of tea. Which ear would you like it poured down? <laughs> Now look here, my good woman. I am not a good woman. What you do in your own time has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Off you go about your duties. I'm expecting the Colonel and a few friends around this evening for a game of bridge. Um, well, didn't you get our letter inviting you to be our special guest? I say, what an absolute fool I've been. Now I know who you are. My lad knows who we are. Absolutely. I've always wanted to meet the Weedle Grums. <laughs> I'll run this hot muffin right up his... Wait! How frightfully silly of me. I've got something in my eye. Try putting your eyelid down as far as you can. Ah, then blowing your nose. Thank you. That's much better. What was all that about? I haven't the foggiest. Always happens when I hear that music. I'd love to play that part. Which part, my lad? Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> no, no, no. It's about this handsome young doctor. This handsome young doctor is sitting, waiting for his train. He's in the British Rail buffet, having a cup of tea and a bun. Sitting at the next table is a rather attractive lady. She's a very happily married woman. This is really irritating me. I just can't think of the title. How frightfully silly of me. I've got something in my eye. Try wrapping your legs round the back of your neck. <laughs> and playing the bagpipes. You're getting yourselves in a right twist over this one. So is she with her legs wrapped round her neck and playing the bagpipes. <laughs> if only I could remember the title. How frightfully silly of me. I've got something in my ear. Ah, you Wally. How frightfully silly of me. I've got something in my eye, you Wally. Uh, try eating a crab sandwich. And whistling, roll me over. This is absolutely ridiculous. If only we could think of the title. It's staring you in the face. Staring us in the face, he's right. I'm not quite with you. The title will be in this dictionary of film stars. Absolutely brilliant. May I have a look? Help yourself. What a splendid book for the film buff. Every film ever made. Ha! Ah, now, here's a film that would stretch any actor's range to the very limit. Now, this is a part I'd really enjoy playing. Is it good? Good. It's absolutely brilliant. Just listen to the dialogue. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome all you culture lovers to Music for the Masses from me, Ernest. And me, Jeffrey. Yeah. 
And before we go any further, Geoffrey, I must ask you, what sign were you born under? The Black Bull. The... <laughs> Black Bull? Yeah, my mother had a pub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the stars, Geoffrey, the stars! Oh, yeah! Well, we had one customer whose brother had met Des O'Connor. <laughs> Mysterious. What's your star sign? Aries. Aries. Yes. I'm a ram, you know. Yes, I am. No. Oh, well, according yes. to Zelma Zodiac, in my copy of Needlework Monthly, you are in for a surprise. Oh, and if you don't believe it. Yes, yes, you are, you are, you are. Mm. And this Zelma Zodiac is any good, then? Zelma Zodiac is any good, mm. any good, mm. any good. Mm. She's mm. the business. Oh, is she? Yes. Oh, and what does she say, then? Well, according to Zelma Zodiac, someone close to you today mm. will be romantically mm. entwined mm. in an affair of the heart. Mm. Oh, I wonder it could be. Well, it's not me. <laughs> hey, it could be our special guest. Oh, you mean Sid Squeak? Yes. Yes, you're right. Ooh. He's going to sing a love song. He's not. He is. <gasps> Good old Zelma Zodiac. Smack her legs at playtime. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this week's special musical guest on Music for the Masses, would you welcome Sid Squeak? <laughs> Thank you, maestro. <laughs> I was sweet on Stacey Simpkins for 16 solid years. Every Saturday we'd go to a cinematic show. I never spoke my love, although my passion was sincere. Till in the stalls last Saturday, I whispered in her ear. I say, Stacey Simpkins, I say. I'm smitten, I'm under your sway. I shan't be salacious, I'm no saucy scamp. Be certain your suitor is not of that stamp. Miss Simpkins, do let us be spliced. Please specify some sunny day. As soon as the bridesmaid have said so long, Sid, then I say, Stacey Stimkins, I say. She sat there for a minute, for 60 seconds at least. This siren at my side somewhat suddenly replied, You've never kissed me once, Sid, and if I'm to be espoused, I must be snuggled up to, Sid, not sprinkled, sprayed or doused. <laughs> I'm soaked, silly Sidney, I'm soaked. I've seldom been quite so provoked. I thought slap and tickle was what I would get. Not splash and trickle, it's made me all wet. I thought I'd be sweetly seduced. My shoulder's not even been stroked. So stuff your proposal, you sad little squirt, cos I'm so silly Sydney, I'm a soap. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yet again we have been advised to warn you that the play you are about to hear has been classified as PG. Pain in the gut. <laughs> it's a good play, is it? It's a saga of the sea. Oh, no. Hey, Geoffrey, we're going to have Sago. Oh, I love Sago, Ernest. Yes, I love <laughs> the so skin. Do I. <laughs> so do I, Geoffrey. With a lovely dollop of raspberry jam in the middle. Yes. yes. Try it out loud, it's a saga, not Sago. Stroll on. Uh, yes, well, as I was saying, we proudly present a saga of the sea entitled All This Trouble Over a Bar of Chocolate. No, rat face, mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> Cue dramatic sea music. Dramatic sea music coming up. All feet on deck. All feet on deck. It's hands, you prawn. Oh, yes, sorry. All hands on deck, you prawn. <laughs> I say, excuse me, Jeff. I am sorry to appear such a bore. Then why do you? <clears throat> Did I hear you say a saga of the sea? Aye, one of the best sea sagas of all time. I'm terribly sorry, but I was led to believe we were doing the no Coward story with myself playing the part of Noel. On your bike, pal. Hey, I remember Noel Coward. Oh, he was wonderful. The master. That's right. He had that butcher shop on the corner of Tarryasson Street. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean the master. That's right. He was a master butcher. 
Do you know, he sold the finest beef dripping you've ever tasted. Look, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm going to have to dig my heels in over this one. I firmly believe that by taking part in a sea saga, I would not only lose my standing as a professional actor, but also my self-respect, which I place above all things. You won't get your money, Paul. Money? Do you really think I would lower myself to play such a part just for money? Yes. Too right, I would. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mutiny on the bounty. Cue dramatic sea music. Dramatic sea music coming up. Now who's the guy they love to buy? Just the socks and tie. Oh, yeah. ah, 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 ah. oh the same with the baby blue eye. Oh, when the ship jumps. April 20th, 1789. My name is Captain Bly. I'm making this entry in my diary with a quill. <laughs> Tomorrow, I take over command as captain of HMS Bounty. I'm writing this in a tavern. It's jolly nice here because it's got a room with a view. Oh, no. Oh, no one to worry us. No one to hurry us. Look, try it out loud. Get on with it. Uh, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I thought it was the no card thing. <clears throat> I was proud to take command of the Bounty, the most modern ship ever built. It had four sails and did 15 knots to the galleon. <laughs> I've been brought up in a seafaring family. My father was an admiral and my mother was the bosun's mate. Fortunately, my father never found out. <laughs> that night, I had a premonition. I think it must have been the pickled beef I'd had for supper. <laughs> the following morning, as I went to sleep aboard the bounty, I knew that the crew had it in for me. They'd removed the gangplank. Ah! <laughs> I'm not a very good swimmer. Fortunately, somebody threw me a packet of soap powder and I washed myself ashore. <laughs> Another joke. <clears throat> I was piped aboard. When I'd crawled out of the end of the pipe, the crew were waiting for me. <clears throat> I was wearing full dress uniform, three cornered hat, and matching trousers. <clears throat> they were the roughest, toughest, most vicious bunch of men I'd ever clapped eyes on. I decided to show them who was in charge. I'd show them that I could be just as tough and ruthless as they were. Now then, chaps, who'd like a sweetie? <laughs> Who's the navigator on the ship? I'm the navigator. Come here, navigator. Where are you? <laughs> What's our course? Sausage, egg and chips, followed by brooms and mustard. <laughs> Jolly good. Now, who's the ship officer? I am, pal. Do you want to make something of it? Good heavens, no. Might I ask your name? I'm Mr. Christian. Right. Now, I think you should know right away I'm a strict disciplinarian. I can be very strict, and I won't stand for any nonsense. <laughs> Fish him out. You were saying? I'm quite an easy-going chap, really. <laughs> oh, I am sorry I'm late. Who might you be? I'm the ship's cook. I've just been ashore for some Arbor Lights. Arbor Lights? For the ship's cat. <laughs> right, let's get the ship underway. We have a long journey in front of us. Way anchor. Six and a half hundred way. That sounds about right. <clears throat> I think that's all for the moment, chaps. But don't forget, I'll see you again whenever spring breaks through oh, again. That song gets right up my nautical nose. Ship's log, 23rd of April, 1789. We've now been at sea for three days, and I must admit, I'm feeling rather ill. Try pulling your eyelid down as far as it'll go. <laughs> then blowing your nose. Ah, how very kind, I'll do that. Uh, since telling the men that we were on a voyage into the unknown to find a new continent, they'd turned rather nasty. They were in a very unpleasant mood. As I write, I can hear them on deck, chanting rude things. Road things, road things, road things. <laughs> and then suddenly, land ho! Land ho! <laughs> I rushed up on deck. You've sighted land? On the starboard side. Just look at those natives. They can't be civilised. Ah, look at the way they're dressed. Savages. That's what they are, savages. This must be the new continent we've been searching for. Yeah, wow, that's flaming Bridlington. <laughs> really? Bridlington? Who set us on this course in the first place? I say, chaps, I'm uh, terribly sorry about this, but I'm afraid... Ah! <laughs> 
there, you can get a straight jock, I say. <laughs> Ship's log, 24th April, 1789 and a quarter. Through my own folly, I had put the men in an even worse mood. They were now in a rebellious mood. As I write, I can hear them up on deck muttering under their breath. Under their breath. Under their breath. Under their breath. breath. I knew that they were plotting against me and I didn't know what to do. I felt quite faint. Try pulling your eyelid down as far as it'll go. Yeah, then blow in your nose. You're most kind. I wasn't going to have a mutiny aboard my ship. I went up on deck and gritted my teeth. Come out! Come out! You can't hide from me forever because someday I'll find you <laughs> right behind you. Ah! <laughs> Next time I'll try a Desert Connor song. Twenty fifth of April, seventeen eighty nine. Dear Marjorie Proops, <laughs> I am a ship's captain, and the other sailors are being absolutely beastly to me. We've had a meeting, and we decided to do something really horrible and wicked to you. It's an open boat job, pal. An open boat? A vast behind. I can't help it. <laughs> We're going to cast you adrift in an open boat. You can't do that. They did that in the film to Tommy Lawton. Charles Lawton. <laughs> Land! Oh! Land! Oh! He's right. There is land, oh. The new continent. Australia. Hey, what are those funny-looking things hopping up and down all over the place? Kangaroos. My bunk's full of them. <laughs> Cast the fool adrift. I'll play the game, chaps. I'm sorry about this, Captain. It's your own fault for being so cruel to us. Not Australia. Never Australia. No man should have to face what awaits me when I reach those shores. I'm begging you. What's he on about? What face is him when he reaches Australia? That's so awful. <laughs> you can't do this to me. I don't deserve this. Hey, what a dreadful way to go. Never mind. Come out. Hey, you'll get there. Help us the three of us. Sharing a smile. Sharing a deep you see mine. Yes, the three of us. Just for a while. Now we'll get back on our bike. We'll see you next time. Yes, we'll see you again. So, tickety tonk. Bye for now. Tutty bye and TTFN. Of the three of us. Just the three of us. There's me, and me, and him. Now they've left me out again, the miserable little devil. <laughs> I don't know. You have been listening to Someone and the Grumbleweeds, starring Graham, Morris, and Robin as the Grumbleweeds, and me, Donald Hewlett, as Someone. Ah, dogs, an Englishman go out in the midday sun. Get on with it, you wally. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, chaps. The music was provided by Dave Collett, Perry Duke, and Andy Marples, with lyrics by Jeremy Brown. The show was written by Eddie Braben, John Brown, Richard Jones, and the producer, Mike Craig. I'll follow my secret <laughs> Ah! You just put your fist in my eye. Try pulling your eyelid down as far as it goes. <laughs>